Hi boys and girls, Mr. Drake here, and I welcome you all, and it's good to see your smiling faces this morning. Are you ready to hear an amazing story from the Bible, from the book of Luke? It comes from chapter 19 and verses 1 through 10. But before we start, I'd like to uh, begin with a word of prayer. So please close your eyes and fold your hands. We'll give our time to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are, Lord. You're the one true God of this universe, Lord. And we pray that through our reading and study today of the book of Luke, that we would grow closer to you, Lord. Help us to know you better and help us to know the plan you have for our lives. Help us to have soft hearts toward you, Lord. And help us to learn more about your character today, Lord. Help us do all this. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> you know, boys and girls, when I get home from hard days of work, you know what I do? If I've gone to the store or, or maybe stopped somewhere, I have a, a little can where I put my change if I've been to the store. So when I get home, no matter if it's just a few coins, I put it in the can and I kind of save it. You know, I don't think about it too much. It just kind of sits on my dresser and maybe once or twice a year, I might go cash those coins in, go to the credit union, or maybe I'll just take the coins myself and maybe take the family out for an ice cream cone or something like that. It's just kind of a fun thing to do. But I don't really think about them too much. It's just kind of a fun thing to do. But can you imagine if I would get home and maybe I had like a tally sheet that I kept in that coin jar right there for my pocket coins. Can you imagine if I had a tally sheet and maybe I kept track of how many pennies and nickels and dimes and quarters I had or maybe even half dollars. Well, don't see those very often. Can you imagine if I stacked them all up every day in a neat little piles and I checked it out and maybe even I compared it with other people in my family and I said, Wow, I think I have a few more than you do. I'm in the lead and kept track of them like that. I'm not sure if the Lord would really like that. And that B might be, might be a little bit uh, overboard, don't you think? But that has a lot to do with our story today. Because you know what? God wants us to really be careful with our money and use it wisely. And there's a lot of verses in the Bible about money. But... He doesn't want money to be first in our lives and for us to be thinking about it every minute of the day. But anyway, our true story has a connection with that money. And I'd like to read the whole thing for you, the whole passage for you right now. If you have a Bible at home, you could read along. <clears throat> like I said, it comes from the book of Luke. And the book of Luke was written by, obviously, Luke, one of the uh, disciples of Jesus. And he was a physician. He was a doctor. He was a very learned man. And so we know that the disciples were, came from various backgrounds. Luke was highly educated. And so he recorded many, many exact facts about what happened as Jesus was working through his ministry that last three years of his life on earth. And so here's what it is. It's entitled Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus, and he was a chief tax collector. He was very wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being short, a short man, he could not. Because the crowd, because of the crowd, he couldn't see over their heads. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree, a sycamore fig tree. Wow, that's pretty amazing. To be able to see Jesus. And since Jesus was coming along the road next to the tree, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked right up and said to, to Zacchaeus, he said, Zacchaeus, you come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. 
So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter. They were, they were confused and they were complaining. He has gone to be a guest with a sinner? <clears throat> but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay them back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Because of this man, <clears throat> because of this man too, a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. And that's from the book of Luke. You know, if you, when you get a little bit older, because I know many of our, our uh, students that we have, especially from the class that I have, from four years old and five in kindergarten, your teacher hasn't asked you to do a lot of writing. But for you students that are a little bit older, you know that if your teacher has asked you to write some essays or some kind of a story, especially stories, they have to have certain parts. But when you read this through, these verses, it seems that there's some very interesting facts. They're all true facts of what happened, but it seems like there's some parts that were intentionally left out. And we'll see as we look back through here, because we're going to look at it a little bit more carefully. And it said, in the beginning it says, Jesus entered Jericho. And at this time in Jesus' ministry, it was coming to a close. And he was headed to Jerusalem for the Passover, to have the Passover feast and to have the Last Supper with his disciples. And you know after that he would hang on the cross. And his ministry was coming to a close. Jericho, the town of Jericho, is about 15 miles away from, from uh, Jerusalem. So Jesus was just passing through. But it seems he took a little bit of a detour. <clears throat> and as he was going into Jericho, he's just passing through, a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. Now we know Zacchaeus was a tax collector and he worked for the Roman government. And it was very interesting because he probably started out, yeah, that was a really important job. He was the chief tax collector. And if you can imagine this, that well this might have been what it looked like at his home after he had been collecting taxes wow it's probably all organized got coins everywhere and at first he probably collected the amount that was due but as the story goes things went bad and you know what he probably maybe because he was such a short man that people might have been making fun of him his whole life I don't know maybe that was the reason but maybe just because he was a tax collector people didn't like him of course, he would collect taxes and give them to the Roman government. But he found out. He thought he would feel better about himself because he had an important job. But people still didn't like him. And I'm sure that maybe because some of the people still were muttering and rumbling and complaining, he said, you know what, I'm just going to charge them a little bit extra. So what probably happened is he would charge them he would give three coins to the Roman government and he would take two coins and he would put them in his own pocket. Oh, boys and girls, would that be an honest thing to do? No, it wouldn't. And you know what? People were really, really upset because something happened. Not only did he take the money, but they were starting to see some of the things that happened afterwards because he had extra money and they started noticing that he started dressing differently 
And so it wouldn't be that surprising to maybe see Zacchaeus wearing something like this. Now I'll hold it down where he probably would have worn it. You can see that he wasn't a very tall man. And dressing like this, he thought maybe people would like him better. They said, wow, he must be an important man. But you know what? It got worse. People would see him coming down the street. And they would be saying, oh, here he comes, Zacchaeus. He cheats us out of money, but we can't stop that. We, we know we have to pay that money to the government, or we'll be in big trouble. Can you imagine seeing somebody in those days walking down the streets in this kind of an outfit? He did not understand. You know, Zacchaeus tried to satisfy that ache in his heart. An ache in his heart, and he tried to solve it with earthly things. Dressing more extravagantly thought that he would get more friends and taking money, more money than he should have, and taxes. And his heart still felt bad. And so, the story continues. Now, he had heard stories about this man, Jesus. And you know, it doesn't say much about what he heard, but if you look earlier and see what was happening in the book of Luke, that you see all throughout the book, that Jesus is healing people and he's changing lives and giving hope to the people that never had any hope. And even he healed people. Matter of fact, Luke must have been totally astonished. He saw lepers that were healed, that had leprosy. He saw a blind man healed. Actually, just before this chapter, in chapter 18, he saw a blind man, his sight was restored and he was so excited. He actually saw a young girl receive her life back after she had passed away from being sick. Jesus brought her back from the dead. Luke must have been totally floored. He's a trained physician. and He was recording all this down. Now, I'm sure that Zacchaeus heard about these things. And so he thought to himself, I would love to see this man, Jesus, he is a miracle worker, and I need a miracle. There's something wrong. There's got to be more to life. And we read on. He said he wanted to see who Jesus was, and now we know why. But being a short man, he could not see, okay, because of the crowd. So he ran ahead. He ran way ahead, and he climbed up in a tree. Oh, we have a tree. And he ran up. And he went up in this sycamore tree. He wanted to see Jesus that bad. Wow. So when he heard that Jesus was coming, he, their people were screaming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. I can just see him now going down. And he's looking up. He finds a tree. He climbs up in that tree uh, so he could get a better view. Wow. If he could only see Jesus, if he could only see him, maybe that would change everything. So let's see what happens next. Okay, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up in the tree he looked up, and right away, he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. Come down. He goes, you're go I'm going to your house today. I am going to your house. Do you think Zacchaeus was happy about that? He was overjoyed. It was amazing. He came down at once, and he welcomed Jesus gladly. I would love to have a video of that, them looking at the, in each other's eyes, and Zacchaeus needed a savior. He needed one badly. He was feeling so bad about himself. Now Jesus makes a big decision right here because Jesus thinks to himself, I was just passing through, but I have some work to do in Jericho as well. And he goes to Zacchaeus' house. They're walking side by side. Wow, that must have been pretty exciting, walking side by side with Jesus. 
and he was being friendly to Zacchaeus. He wasn't yelling at him or anything. Wow, this was a great moment for him. And when the people saw this, all the people in the crowd, now we have to know, not all those people in the crowd were believers. They were people, sometimes they just thought it was, wow, just like watching a magic show, doing, watching Jesus do his miracles. But there was some way spiritual to it. It wasn't, it wasn't just for entertainment. It was a reason for it. So when all the people saw this, they began to mutter, Ah, oh, he has gone and be a guest of a sinner? Ah, I don't even think they followed him to the house. They said, what is all this about? Ah, uh, so this is the part that I scratched my head about because the Bible doesn't tell us what happened at Zacchaeus' house. Do you think Zacchaeus was worried about Maybe Jesus will see all this extra money. Maybe my fancy house. Maybe more of the clothes that I have. You'd think he'd be worried, but he wasn't worried. There was something about the way Jesus behaved that put him to rest. And he was not worried. Whatever happened, here's how it, here's how it finishes. But Zacchaeus stood up. And this is the important part. And he said, Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. Wow, that's a big change. And, and if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I'll pay back four times the amount to those people. Wow. There's been a big change here. I think there's been a softening in Zacchaeus' heart. Whatever Jesus said must have been powerful. That's for sure. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Zacchaeus was lost. He was far from being spiritual at all. He was grasping, as Tom, Pastor Tom Llewellyn talks about, as people reaching out for things in a horizontal way, things of this earth that will all pass away. But the Lord would like us to think more vertically. And so God reached down through the form of Jesus Christ to help us with our sin. And you know, Zacchaeus must have realized, said, Lord, I've done wrong. I've done some bad things. And and I and you know I I I can't figure it out. I try to solve it on my own and it hasn't worked. And I've been thinking of myself and things of this earth and trying to be popular and things like that. I haven't been thinking about God at all. But you know, when this was all over, he was seeking God. That's what his heart was aching for the whole time. And he was seeking heavenly peace. And he was thinking about having, or did, have faith in God in order for Jesus to say that. And he was thinking more vertically to having a relationship with God. And for Jesus to say that kind of reminds me of another situation when Jesus hung on the cross and there was two thieves on either side, and one thief never knew who Jesus was, but one did say, truly, you are the Son of God. Remember me when you enter your kingdom. He had no chance to do anything right, but it was a change of heart that won him his salvation. Because Jesus told him also, he said, today I will see you in paradise. It's a change of heart. It's not anything we do, not anything we can earn. Something that's a free gift, and it's from the Lord. Zacchaeus underwent amazing changes. And this is a great story of hope. This is amazing. And I'm glad you were here so that we could talk about it today. Now, there's a little bit of a song that's about this. 
story in the Bible. And it goes like this. I bet some people have already heard this. It goes, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Lord was walking by, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down for I'm going to your house today. I'm going to your house today. I love that song. And I love this passage because it gives me tremendous hope. There's many other stories. I think about Saul turning into Paul. We read about that in the book of Acts. And that's another great passage in the Bible. And the Lord loves it when we read His Word. And a lot of times when I read it, I think about it sometimes as being so rich. Sometimes I think when people are planting a garden, I've done that and maybe you've helped do that too, is when you're preparing the soil and you're working it, there's something about it that just knows there's a richness to it. And I know when I read passages in the Bible, I get that feeling too, that it's rich. And it's rich in spirit. And I love reading the Bible. And I'm glad that we have it to read. That's so important. There's one more passage I want to bring to your attention. And it's in Deuteronomy. And it's got a great connection to our story today. <clears throat> it's in Deuteronomy chapter 6, and it's 5 through 7. I bet a lot of you are familiar with it. Let me read it for you right now. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children and talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road Sound familiar? <laughs> and when you lie down and you, when you get up. It reminds me of Zacchaeus walking shoulder to shoulder with our Savior to his house. And he was overjoyed. Because it changed his life. It's in the Bible and it gives me hope. I hope it gives you hope too. Let's end with a word of prayer. Thank the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we just love this passage, Lord. And even as an adult, when I reread this again, there's things in here we could talk about for a long time, but we only have a short time today. But we thank you for our time, and I thank you for all the boys and girls, and I know older brothers and sisters and parents might be listening in, and we're so glad that you're here with us, Lord. We're glad for the hope it gives, and we thank you for the promises they are fulfilled through your scripture, and we can see it happening, Lord. We know how much you love us, and we thank you, Lord. Help us to think about this passage and how important it is to our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being here today, boys and girls. And I hope to see you again soon, face to face. <laughs> Bye now.